Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacey Flowers and I'm a student of Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University and on a journey to become 100% debt free. My current debt is nearly $200,000. I'm on baby step number two to repay all of my debts. My income as of this month is $9,000 and I work for myself part time. In this video, I'm going to be going over my January 2019 mid month budget report card where I'm going to be talking about how much I've spent so far. So if you are interested in that please keep watching okay so I'm really excited about adding this level of tracking and accountability to my debt-free journey this year as many of you guys know if you watch my financial goals video my financial goal for 2019 is to complete baby step two and in me doing that I'm going to need a little bit more support and a little bit more concentration and focus than I used in 2018 um, to complete this goal primarily as it relates to my debt snowball and the interest that my debt snowball is gaining. And so what I've been able to do in these last couple of weeks is sort of reevaluate a pay structure that's best for me. Originally, my pay structure was designed to just adapt the hot habit of billion dollar companies because I like the idea of adapting um, billion dollar habits, right? But that may not be something that's sufficient for me achieving my goal because interest is going to be a problem. So, for example, Google pays their pays out all of their um, people who contribute to the Google billion dollar brand. They pay that out on the 20th through the 22nd. And so I was paying myself on the 20th of each month to mirror the habit of Google because it's a billion dollar company. However, as it relates to interest, that means that there are 20 days that each and every single one of my debts is adding interest. And so let's just say I was considering the interest cost for my student loans. Now daily, my student loans, daily my student loans, now daily as it stands where my student loans are right now, my student loans add an extra $27.26 per day. So if I take $27.26 times 20, that means every single month for no reason at all, I'm adding $545.20, right? So that doesn't make any sense for me, especially since my business payout practices are that I'm always paying myself the money that I that I'm the salary that I'm paying myself in the month is money that was earned in the previous month. So I'm never actually in the rears. I'm never actually trying to earn money in the current month that I'm in because all of the money that I'm paying myself has been reconciled from the previous month. So with that being said, um, I'm considering paying myself at the beginning of the month so that that way my first payment for the month is always made at the beginning of the month and that way the monthly interest is not adding up to this significant number. But I'm still working through all of those ideas but in the interim I believe that tracking um, my payments and all that I'm doing on a bi-weekly basis will give me a deeper level of accountability that will support me in really, really attacking this debt snowball as aggressively as humanly possible. So that is the reason why this mid-month check-in is going to be here. Um, I'm thinking because of the amount of money that um, I'll be earning each month that I'll likely break it up to me being paid on the 1st and the 15th. Um, I'm going to try to wrap my mind around it all coming in at the first. I'm not 100% for sure, but I do like the idea of getting paid once a month. It just is emotionally easier to just process it that way. But again, decisions haven't been made. The only decision that I've made so far is that I will be paying myself at an earlier time in the month so that that way I can get in front of my interest, especially as it relates to my student loans. So the other thing that you can expect from this mid-month check-in is that I'll ask myself three reflection questions and then I'll throw you over my shoulders so that way you guys can see exactly what I did with my money in the first two weeks of the month and then exactly what I did in the final two weeks of the month. So with that being said, my number one reflection question is what is my top feeling so far? Um, and you guys know for me money is more than just dollars and cents. It's incredibly emotional which is the reason why I'm going to track my dollars and cents. The light is moving. Oh man, hold on, let me see. Hold on, I'm trying to talk about that guy. The light, the light has moved just, just a hair. Um, so my top feeling that I have, you guys know that money is more than just dollars and cents. It's still incredibly emotional for me. I'm not at the place where money is not emotional. And so for that reason, I still track my emotions. And so the top feeling that I'm feeling right now as of January 15th is nervous. Um, I'm feeling an overwhelming amount of nervousness. And I believe it's because 
of this unknown space. Like I don't, you know, one, I don't know what it means to aggressively pay on my debt um, from a healthy place. Like I aggressively paid before and that did not turn out well for me. So I think that there's a little bit of nervousness about that. I don't want to fall into that experience again. Um, but also it's just unknown. Like I don't, I, I really don't know what happens when, you know, all of my debt is paid. And so there's nervousness um, just about removing it from my life. And that's just the honest feeling that I'm experiencing so far two weeks in with me. And in, in two weeks into this month, I paid off one debt that was incredibly emotional. So, um, so yeah, so what has worked so far this month? Um, the, the big thing that worked so far this month is me prioritizing my monthly intention, obviously over my feelings, and then also affirmations. And what I mean by that, in my um, budget report card, I always set a monthly intention for the coming month. And you guys know my intention for this month is to focus on my debt snowball. And so with that being said, like, even though I was, I'm nervous, like, I'm like, well, whatever, your intention is to focus on paying off this debt snowball. So... I don't care that you're nervous you're gonna you're gonna sign this money over to these accounts that you owe period point blank but then the other thing that was really helpful as well um, were a couple of affirmations and my affirmations um, if you follow me on Instagram I have a little money highlight and all of the affirmations are in there and those have been phenomenal because they're all about um, safety and I, for those of you guys who um, have already purchased the money mindset manual or you're just familiar with any of the work that I do in the money mindset manual You know that safety is a really big component to a lot of people who have who are very very emotional about money And so all of the affirmations are around reminding me of the level of safety that I have in both earning money And then spending money in the areas where I'm prioritizing so the third reflection question is is what do I need to do to finish this month strong and the big thing that I need to do to finish this month strong is I just need the courage to face the unknown. Like I need to encourage myself. I need to stir up as much courage as possible to overcome the nervousness. And I think because the nervousness is is about what's unknown, um, that's why I think courage is the thing that's going to that's going to help me to be able to overcome it. Like I just need the courage to say that I am someone who's debt free and it's safe for me to be debt free. It's safe for me to no longer owe, owe the IRS. It's safe for me to not have outstanding medical bills. It is safe for me to earn money easily. Like I just need to keep affirming that so that I can build up the courage in myself to believe that so that that way I stay on course for the remainder of this month because this month I did pay my bills in a way that I don't typically pay my bills and I'll be able to clarify that when I throw you guys over my shoulders. Um, but I think just to, to make sure that this is a strong, solid month, I just, I need more courage and I need to do everything that I can to muster up the courage to finish strong. So now I'm going to throw you guys over my shoulder so we can take a look at my numbers in the Every Dollar app so you can see exactly what I've done so far with my money. Okay, so if you're looking at my budget, you can see that it is an every dollar budget and that is because after my budget with me live, I put all my numbers in here and I had to correct for two mistakes that I made. I forgot to add my therapy costs and I forgot to add my personal training costs. So as we go down in the budget, you will see those adjustments. In addition, um, I have received gift money so far and so I did go back in and adjust for the gift money that I received. So as of today, it is an every dollar budget. So coming down to my income, the income that I plan to earn from my company this month is $9,000. So far, I've paid myself $5,500 of the $9,000 that I anticipate earning this month. Um, in addition to income, so far this month, I've received $572 in monetary gifts. And so you can see for a total income that I've actually received so far this month is $6,072. Going down, um, you will see that I've done something, well, I guess you guys don't know this, but rarely ever do I not pay my tithes and my child support first. I typically take that right off the top. And so one of the reasons why I didn't do that this month is because I was incredibly emotional with information that came out. I talked a lot about it in my celebration um, second debt paid off video. So if you guys are interested in sort of what I was feeling and thinking and going through, I highly encourage you to watch that video. But I was incredibly emotional this month. Um, one, because of how much income I was receiving, but just also because of other things uh, that happened. And so 
um, rather than doing what I normally do, which is I think best practice, which is to pay my tithes and my child support right off the top, I did not do that. This is one of the reasons why I'm like, I'm going to need courage this month and I'm going to need to encourage myself because yes, it takes discipline to do this, but it also, it's a, it's a courageous, very bold act to, to set aside this amount of money when you're facing um, the level of debt that I'm facing. So that's why I typically do it at the beginning so I don't have to worry about being disciplined and courageous on the back end. But there you have it. Um, also, as far as savings, I did not plan additional costs for my savings in any way. And this is something that's come up a couple of times in the questions. My emergency fund, my baby emergency fund is fully funded at $1,000. It has been funded at $1,000 since my income increased to more than $20,000 a, a year. My health savings is also fully funded at $500. And then I have a homemaking savings. And this is simply... Um, what is going to be the sinking fund for me to be able to decorate my home the money that's in there as of right now isn't money that i personally contributed it's money that i've received in gifts and there's right around like 190 dollars um, so far including gifts that i received from this month in my homemaking savings um sinking fund coming down to housing none of my housing costs have come out just yet just because that's just the way that the bills come in most of my bills come in after the 20th and so none of my housing expenses have been um debited from my account my grocery budget for this month i gave myself zero dollars because i had so much money left over from last month plus i had gift cards and so my intention with my grocery haul for january is to fully stock my pantry and also use the money that i had from my um gift cards and left over from previous budgets to set myself up for the year as far as groceries are concerned so there was zero dollars planned zero dollars spent Transportation, I give myself $50 a month for transportation and so far I've spent $6.71 on the Uber that you guys saw me get um, when I went from the grocery store. Coming down, you see my renter's insurance at $5.75 has come out, my life insurance of $10.44 has come out, and my health insurance has not come out just yet. And I need to change this to health coverage, not insurance. Um, therapy, I have gone to therapy one time this month and so that charge of $70 has come out. I did not give myself a clothing budget this month. Oh, I'm sorry. So therapy, I forgot to mention it on my budget with me live. And so I go to therapy twice a month and so that's $140 and so far I've gone once and $70 has come out. Clothing, um, did not give myself a clothing budget this month. Pocket money, I gave myself $20 this month in pocket money, and I've spent that $20 that I've given myself in pocket money. Also gave myself $20 for laundry this month, and I also spent um, that for my laundry this month. My cost for a personal trainer is $50. It's at, or, excuse me, $450. It's actually $400, and then the gym membership is $50, but I'm just putting it together because I'm not yet going to the gym on my own. So, and you can't get a personal trainer without the membership. So that's why I put it all together and that cost has not come out yet either. Now coming down to my debt um, snowball, this is where you'll see most of the activity. So as many of you guys know, and I shared a little bit of this in my second debt payoff in my celebration, I did get another medical bill. And that medical bill, if you're looking at the information over here, the starting balance is $1,128.95. I have a payment plan set up of minimum paying $32 a month. I have not paid that minimum just yet, but that is the payment plan that we have set up um i also have the original medical bill that you guys are familiar with that medical bill is sitting at sixteen hundred dollars and nineteen cents with fifty dollars in it so it's actually four medical bills put into one and each medical bill um i put fifty dollars on each of those but it's like it's from one provider so that's the reason why it's like collapsed into one so total minimum for that medical bill is two hundred dollars the biggest um, number so far that I paid in debt was to pay off City Girl. What was remaining left on City Girl was $4,491. I paid $4,491 um, to City Girl. The IRS is also a bill that needs to be paid. And um, I made a payment on the IRS of $1,246.99 
which leaves me a remaining balance of $1,867.64 for the IRS. Now, a really big reason why I was able to make these adjustments in my debt snowball is because if you notice, I do not have a minimum payment here for my student loans. And that is because originally in the Budget With Me Live, I thought that my student loans became active in January. They they don't. This I still have um, deferment this month, but my payments begin next month. And so I really wanted to take advantage of that minimum payment, which is going to be $1,600 and put it towards trying to clear as much of this debt as possible so that way I'm not making a minimum payment of $1,600 and all these other minimum little minimum payments so that is one of the reasons why I was able to shuffle the numbers shuffle the money around to be able to eliminate city girl and make such an aggressive payment on my uh, IRS bill so I want to look at my overall um, numbers here so I like how this lays everything out. So plan this month, I'm planning income of $9,572. You can see this, this, this wonderful color breakdown. When you look at this color breakdown, this big yellow color here shows how much of my income I'm putting towards debt, which is significant. If you come down here, it actually gives you a percentage. I am putting 62% of my income towards debt. That is an amazing amount to put towards debt. And the reason that you're going to see that, especially now moving forward in 2019, is because my goal for 2019, my financial goal, is to complete baby step two. So you're going to see more aggressive payments and numbers like that. Um, as far as my giving, I'm putting right around 19 to 20% of my income towards giving. The reason it's not 20% is because I don't give off of the gifts that um, I receive. My total housing cost relative to my income is at 10%. I think these numbers here are incredibly important, especially with um, so many people having concern for how my numbers are breaking down. Um, if you come to my transportation budget, I understand that I ride Uber and that seems like a luxury, but I spend 1% of my income on transportation. So it's like we have to be mindful of our Whole Foods goggles that just says, oh, you can't afford to do this. It's like, no, I can afford to do whatever my budget allows me to do. And my budget is simply telling my money where to go every single month. And when you look at what I'm doing with my money relative to the income that I have coming in, I'm still making the exact same decisions that I made when I was on a low income. The numbers just look dramatically better because I have so much more disposable income to put towards debt. Um, same thing with insurances. I have about 2% of my income going to insurances, which is phenomenal because insurances are covering like, it should something happen. Like, this is like unbelievable, like how much insurances will kick in to cover costs related to me um, being healthy, you know, if I were to pass away, etc. Like insurance would just be able to cover those. Um, the other thing that I wanted to take a look at is my lifestyle budget. 7% of my income is going to lifestyle, which means that I spend 7% of what I take home and what I earn as an entrepreneur on myself in order to maintain my health and well-being. That is a phenomenal amount. So I understand that my numbers, while personal training and therapy and all of these things sound like luxuries. They're not luxuries. They're just choices that I've made that I'm afforded to be able to make because I have done the work to earn more money so that that way my budget can look so that that way I can spend my mon money on areas that are significant to me. Because even if you add up everything that I spend in giving, housing, food, transportation and insurance and lifestyle, it is still less than what I'm spending towards repaying my debt, which means that my focus and my intention for 2019 is to complete baby step two and my income is reflecting that focus. So this is what I have here in the plan, but even if you switch it over to spent, it doesn't show you the percentages, but you can still see even of the amount of money that I've brought into my household this month, the significant, the most significant portion has gone to my debt. So I want to encourage you guys to keep that in mind as you're following me along on this journey that the percentages of what I'm doing make, the percentages of what I'm doing matter a lot more than just what it is that you see me doing, specifically as it relates to the financial goal that I'm focusing on. You didn't, I didn't talk a lot about my percentages last year because 
my financial goal was to restore my financial dignity and the steps and the actions that I had to take in order to restore my financial dignity and to complete baby step two are dramatically different than the steps and the actions that I need to take in 2019. So with that being said, I hope that you have enjoyed my January 2019 mid-month check-in and I look forward to talking to you all very soon. I deeply appreciate you supporting my work. Bye-bye.